today's video, I'm going to take a look at my Twitter feed and just go through it and see if there's any interesting stories to do with Irish law or Irish business. Although, to be honest about it, my Twitter feed is mainly set up to receive tweets and to follow legal or law-based accounts, but I, I must, uh, must change it and, and put in some uh, business-related stuff because obviously that's something that I'm interested in as well. But having looked through it there, I see that the issue of the state pension age and the forced retirement is becoming an issue or has become an issue in the general election and there's a lot of talk about it. This is a discrimination based claim to the WRC from time to time that I've been involved in. Essentially, if the contract of employment doesn't have a retirement age in it, then the employer must objectively justify any retirement age. So that's something now that's a legal issue that's spilling over into the political arena and obviously people are taking the advantage and the opportunity with the general election to raise the question of the state pension age and the forced retirement and all that stuff and the gap between the retirement age and uh, having to sign on the dole and so on. There's an issue there or a tweet there from the Law Society about the mental health of employer or of solicitors and uh, bullying and harassment apparently is becoming a, a, one of the biggest issues that solicitors are ra raising with the Law Society. Um, there's a, an issue there about bogus self-employment and so-called self-employment and I recently wrote an article there, a blog post about a doctor, whether he was an employee or self-employed contractor and the doctor brought a claim to the WRC um, and won the case on the basis that he was entitled to be treated as an employee even though the, uh, the other party was claiming that he was a self-employed contractor. It's an interesting case. The blog post that I've written is on my website employmentrightsireland.com It's called Was Doctor an Employee or Self-Employed Contractor? It's worth having a look at if this is something that concerns you because it actually goes through what the WRC went through in the questions that they ask when they are making a decision as to whether somebody is self-employed or an independent contractor or whether they're an employee. Those questions will be guided by the Revenue Commissioner's guidance and also by previous decisions from the WRC and from the Labour Court. Generally, there's a whole series of questions that need to be asked in order to decide whether somebody is an employee or a self-employed contractor or self-employed person. I note there as well that bullying and harassment now is the main reason solicitors are seeking help from the law care facility, the law care service, which is run by the employment uh, or by the law society. So when you see bullying and harassment being issues that solicitors find affects them on a daily basis, then obviously the ordinary person in the workplace is going to have a difficult time. Aldi now apparently are after introducing a minimum wage in the workplace or a living wage rate of 12 euros 30 per hour. So that's I think one of the best rates starting rates of pay or certainly minimum rates of pay from a retailer in Ireland. So that's from Aldi and have accepted the uh, this living wage idea and not just paid the national minimum wage but have gone further than that. There's a tweet there about John Waters running as an independent in Dunleary in the election. I met John Waters many many years ago when uh, when I was actually in retail, he called in to me one day in Enfield here for petrol. Nice man. The law said here tweeting there that overseas lawyers who wish to practice in the Republic can find key information on the Law Society website. Apparently a lot of overseas lawyers have registered with the Law Society of Ireland in order to, I think, transition from, for example, the United Kingdom 
where they've had the Brexit situation and Brexit concerns. I see another tweet there about the residential tenancy disputes. 20% of all disputes centre on the retention of tenant deposits. I see a tweet there about Traveller Sisters winning 10,000 from Hotel and B&B in, I think it's Loch Grey in Galway. It's to do with discrimination. It's a discrimination claim under the Equal Status Act that was brought against a hotel and a B&B in, I think, Loch Grey in County Galway. And the Traveller Sisters brought the claim and they were discriminated against. Uh, they went to uh, book accommodation and so on for their uncle's funeral and apparently they were turned away. So they brought a claim and they were successful. They've been awarded five grand each, I think. Yeah, win 10 grand in total, I think. Discrimination is something that's fairly easy to fall foul of if you're the provider of goods and services under the Equal Status Act. I see a tweet there as well about the recent interesting developments in the whole area of personal injury law. I myself wrote a blog post there yesterday about developments in 2019 in the whole area of personal injuries and the apparently more stringent report or uh, approach by the courts to the question of personal injury claims, negligence, the obligation on the plaintiff, on the injured person to prove their case, to prove negligence and so on. So my blog post is on businessandlegal.ie, that's my solicitor's website and it's called Trends in Personal Injury Law in Ireland in 2019. It looks at a number of high court cases and a court of appeal cases um, and that's in the context of debate obviously going on in Ireland for a while now about personal injury claims, about bogus personal injury claims, about genuine personal injury claims, about the cost of insurance, about small businesses having to close down and so on. I previously during 2019 wrote a blog post about the fact that the award in Ireland for uh, whiplash injuries and soft tissue injuries is 4.4 times greater than awards for similar injuries in England and Wales. It's hard to understand why that would be the case, but that apparently is the case. But the courts, the High Court and the Court of Appeal seem to be putting the brakes on to a great extent on personal injury claims and seem to be reducing the amount of uh, damages awarded as well. However, that hasn't filtered through quite yet to the district court and circuit court because the circuit court uh, saw increased awards in 2019, which went against the trend from the High Court. There's a new education bill, uh, education student and parent bill 2019 um, published and it is going to apparently enhance the right of students, the rights of students and parents alike. So when that bill becomes law, I'll have a look at it and I'll see exactly what it does in terms of improving the rights of parents and uh, students. The question of stress then in the workplace is something that comes up regularly. I see there uh, Mason Hayes and Curran have some sort of uh, seminar uh, about uh, workplace issues, employment law, and what is workplace stress and the legal responsibility for employers in relation to stress in the workplace. I've written many, many blog posts myself about stress in the workplace and the fact that stress, ordinary workplace stress is perfectly acceptable and is not actionable. What's actionable is stress to the point which is basically negligent of the employer to expect an employee to sustain the pressure of what they are being put under. If that sort of increased workload, for example, results in a stress-related injury, a psychological injury, then that may well be actionable. But ordinary stress from being engaged in the workplace, from having to answer to the employer in a disciplinary matter, um, having to answer to the employer for perhaps uh, an absence rate that's higher than uh, satisfactory, that type of stress is not actionable and is quite frankly supposed to be accepted as just being part of work on the basis that work is not play, it's not recreation, it's not fun. And inevitably there's going to be some stress involved, but what you need to understand is the 
key difference between ordinary workplace stress and uh, actionable stress. There's a lot of talk there on Twitter as well about the case recently where the employee was awarded 27,000 euros by the WRC for the homophobic comments that he had to experience and listen to in the workplace. The employer went along, but quite frankly, I had a brief look at the employer's so-called defence and it was, to put it very mildly, ill-advised because the defence did not address the issue, did not rely on the defence that's open to the employer in a discrimination-based claim and it was never going to cut the mustard and certainly the employer in that case would have done well, would have been well advised to get legal advice, employment law advice because they were walking into a situation where given what I read online they simply couldn't succeed. So the, the man, the victim, the uh, complainant as it were in this WRC case he was awarded 27 grand. If you're running a small business, running any sort of a business 27 grand plus perhaps legal fees is not to be sniffed at. Commentary there as well from another solicitor that he's surprised that the employer let the case run and obviously he understands and recognises that uh, you know looking at the facts you'd want a fairly good defence um, to defend such a case. You'd want to be able to point out very firm action steps that you took to redress the balance and to fix the situation in the workplace but you simply cannot turn around and say oh we didn't know what was going on or something of that nature that's not going to cut the mustard. There's an interesting tweet there about a healthcare app. What happens when a healthcare app makes an incorrect diagnosis which is relied upon by a patient and results in harm? That's something that looks at legal proceedings that might be issued, the legal basis for bringing such proceedings, with whom liability might lie. It's interesting, it's uh, Mason Hayes and Curran tweeted that. It's uh, called, I think, Diagnosis on Demand. I must have a look at that blog post myself. There's another tweet there about a girl settling a case. Her head got trapped in electric gates and she settled for 20 grand. That's reported there in the Irish Times. Uh, her neck became trapped in electric gates in North Dublin. She settled her case in the circuit court for 20,000. Uh, Leila, the child's name, suffered post-traumatic stress following the entrapment and so on. And finally then, there is a tweet there. I wrote about it myself or updated myself, my uh, information on my website businessandlegal.ie about ground rents in Ireland. There is a change in the law the Landlord and Tenant Ground Rents Amendment Act 2019. It tackles uh, something that arose from a Supreme Court decision there in the last few years, which made it more difficult for people to buy out the ground rent and enlarge their interest in their property. It's now going to be easier for them to do that. There was a sort of an anomaly there arising from that Supreme Court decision. I've written about it on my blog um, or my website businessandlegal.ie and it's about the Landlord and Tenant Ground Rents Amendment Act 2019. I hope you find this video of some interest. If this is the type of video, this is a new departure for me to a certain extent. Basically I'm going through my Twitter feed and I'm commenting on various legal issues. I have to add business issues to it because that's something I'm interested in as well and that's the market I seek to serve small business and legal and uh, they are the areas as I say that I'm interested in. If this sort of video um, appeals to you, if you have any comments to make, stick them down below on, on YouTube in the box and uh, let me know, give me a bit of feedback and see what you think. You might think that it's useful, you might think it's all over the place, um, but let me know anyway what you think and I may do more of them if the feedback is good. And if the feedback is good, well, obviously you can indicate it by giving the thumbs up down below. If you don't find this type of video, this type of commentary video uh, useful, then um, let me know in the comments there as well. And I will obviously take your account or take your comments into account. Thanks for watching.